Okay, the next topic that I'll review for you um, is uh, the topic of major and minor chords and how they work in a key. Um, so, I know a lot of you have just memorized this, but I do like to go over how the, the concept of the, the hows, the whys. I think that's really important and you'll remember it for a longer time and you'll find it very useful if you understand why some of the chords are major and some of them are minor. So, we're going to go back to um, the key of G. And this is not the key of G, is it? There's something missing. This is not a G major scale. You should know what's wrong. Go ahead, say it. Yes, you're right. I need F sharp here. Okay, so now I've got a key of G, and it will have that pattern that all major scales need to have. Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. That particular sequence is what makes gives it its identity. Now, when I look at these, these are notes, but we use Roman numerals, like a one, and twos, and threes, and fours, and fives to represent chords. Now, in music theory, we use a capital Roman numeral to represent a major chord, and a lowercase Roman numeral to represent a minor chord. So, I know you already know this, I'm going to review it though. The sequence that occurs is that a G chord, the chord that is called G, will be major in the key of G. The chord that is called A will be an A minor chord. The chord that is a B will be a, a B minor. The three chord is a B minor. Four chord, major. Five chord is major. Six chord is minor. And what do I call the seven chord? The crazy cousin. So we're not going to talk about the crazy cousin. That's a diminished chord. And we're not using it in, our, in this class. So don't even worry about it. So no sevens, OK? We only go up to six. Now, I'm not saying that this is a major note. I'm saying that this is a major chord. And as you know, chords have multiple parts inside of them. What are the parts of a chord? Root, third, and fifth, the ingredients of a chord. And if you're having trouble with this, please look at my video on chord anatomy again and watch that a few times and you should be okay with it. It is fast paced, but it's not so hard. Okay, so a G chord then, will have a G in it, skip one to a B, and skip one to a D. Those are the notes that are inside a G chord. If, you're, if you don't believe me, go ahead and play a G chord and figure out all the notes that you're playing, include the open strings, and you'll find it's just a sequence of G's, B's, and D's. That's what gives it its character. That's what gives it its sound. So that is a G major chord. Now, if I take just these ingredients, the ingredients in the key of G, and I put play an A chord, I'll get an A, a C, and an E. I'm skipping every other one to get these ingredients. A, B, C, D, E, root, third, and fifth. That chord is going to be minor. Go ahead and play an A minor chord and take a look at it. Now why? Why is that minor? Why is this major? Well, it all has to do with this formula again. It comes always back to the formula and the distance between the notes. So when you take a look at the major chord, you'll see that a G to a B has a distance of two whole steps. A B to a D has a distance of one and a half steps. So an A chord, A to C, has a distance of one and a half, and a C to E has a distance of two whole steps. So the analogy I used to describe this is that these chords they're like sandwiches. And the outside, the root and the fifth, are the bread. They stay the same. The bread's always the same. But the filling is what changes. So a G to a B in a major chord, in a G major chord, a G to a B goes the distance of two whole steps. That's a major distance. It's a big distance. A minor chord only goes a minor distance. It only goes the distance of one and one half steps. So, a minor chord has the third closer to the root. A major chord has the third farther away from the root of the chord. That's how that works. So you have to believe me when I write this out. It, it, it works. And if you go through each chord, you'll find that this formula of one and a half and two whole steps will occur on every minor chord, the two, the three, the six. And this formula, two whole steps and then one and a half, will happen on the G, the C, and the D chord. This is translated into every major key 
and can be written above every major scale because this pattern stays the same. Okay? I hope that's a useful review for you on how chords work, how chords are major, and how they're minor. Remember on your exam, I'm going to ask you to change minor chords to major chords. We'll do one quick review of that. A few, few short examples. If a G, B, D chord is a G chord, if that's a major chord, how do I make it into a minor chord? Well, as I told you, the outside stays the same. The bread is always the same. We have a G and a D as our root and our third. Root third fifth, root third fifth. The third, the filling, gives the chord its flavor. So, I told you that in a minor chord, the third is closer to the root. So what we need to do is we need to lower the third to make it minor. So, how do I lower a B? I make it a B flat. I've just created a B minor, or a G minor chord. Let's do one more. Take the C chord. I know that that's major, C, E, G. Change that to minor. First thing you do, put down a C and a G because they stay the same. And then I need to lower the third. How do I lower an E? I make it flat. What if there's a sharp here? I'll tell you right now, this is a major chord, believe me. D, F, A is a major chord. And you do the same thing, D and an A, my third is an F sharp. I need to lower that by half step. How do I lower an F sharp? Look at your guitar. F sharp is the second fret. Go to the first fret and I get an F natural or a regular F. Now if I want to go the opposite direction, I can do that. I just need to do the opposite. If I have an A minor chord, A, C, E, I need to make that into a major chord, I raise the middle up. I raise the third up by a half step. Outside stays the same. C, raised by a half step, is a C sharp. There's my A major chord. One more. How about an E minor chord? E, G, B is an E minor chord. I know that. Look, E, G, B. I know that's a little bit weird when we go through, through it this way. E, G, B, to make it into a major chord, E and B stay the same. The G must be raised by a half step. Okay? That covers two questions on the exam. You'll have to write out the Roman numerals, and you'll have to be able to change major chords to minor chords and minor chords to major chords. Okay, that concludes this review. Good luck.